Hello and welcome back to episode 5 of this Let's Play series with Wolverhampton Wanderers and as you can see we've skipped on quite a long way since the last episode so there's not going to be a live com in this episode I'm just going to talk about where we've gone and how we've done before in the next episode I'm going to play the next game which is a Manchester City in the FA Cup 5th round so I'll go through the schedule first of all maybe we'll watch some of the highlights so the last game that I played on the live com was all the way back uh, against QPR the 3-2 win there I think it was a long long time ago so we played lots of games since then we've had quite an up and down mixed fortunes started off there with a one all draw against Fulham which was an absolute defensive fest Max Power got sent off after 8 minutes uh, Chris Martin then took the lead for Fulham before Daniel Johnson scored a penalty for us to make it level at half time and then Thomas Callas was sent off 76 minutes but it was a very very defensive game we just made sure we had shut up shop from the I mean two yellow cards in the first 10 minutes for Max Power who has in fact gone back to Wigan has he played much since then only four times for us he, he scored a couple of goals in the League Cup and scored a league goal but he was He's not been as good as Daniel Johnson, who's been outstanding for us uh, so far this season. Then we moved on to a game against Cardiff away from home, where we didn't perform at all. A Ricky Lambus hat-trick, can you believe? Uh, before moving then to Nottingham Forest away from home, a very, very good win. 4-2 away win. Quite annoying in a way that it was 4-2 in the end, because we completely dominated the game. And we were 4-0 up at one point, so to concede those two goals... Uh, Ross McCormack also missed a penalty which is hilarious um, the way that he missed it but we played some really good football there Dicko, that was his first goal of the season he came in, I gave him a little bit longer to bed into the team than they did in real life because we had other players scoring goals so we didn't. We weren't desperate for a striker but it was nice to freshen things up uh, this is the third goal is it Helder Costa Latosha we're just working the ball really well an excellent finish there from Bud Varson um, to make it 3-0 this is the fourth Costa into the box Cavaliero Johnson there again good finish from the edge of the box he's he, he's been an absolute find his um, value has gone up to something like 6.7 million something like that he's really really done Wonders! I can't believe believe we've actually managed to get him. To be honest, because Preston, you know, a club of similar stature in terms of division and things like that. But we brought him in, and he's been amazing. But I'm a little bit worried now about what's going to happen at the end of this season. This highlight seems to have been going on forever. Uh, they might, it was a move where they kept the ball for a long way, long time. <clears throat> I think this is a similar sort of thing we managed to break but then they broke back um, but yeah Daniel Johnson has been a fantastic signing for us this season and I hope that we can maybe sign him permanently at the end of the season or get some money in of a similar stature to him but that was a an annoying end to the game but we won the game which we dominated um, so not too concerned about that we then went uh, to Bristol City or had Bristol City at home Gary Hooper I think were these his first couple of goals but Gary Hooper performed well on this day as well he scored a couple of goals he has actually been a very very good signing for us considering he had quite a few injury problems at the start of the season as you'll see as we go through the games recently he's really come into his own he's been playing as a striker by himself and he's been playing alongside um, Dicko as well both of whom have been successful but Varsen has dropped out of the team a little bit recently he's uh, not been in the greatest of form that was a good goal from Bristol City but we managed to hold on there for the win from that game then we went and were defeated very disappointingly against QPR at home didn't really turn up for this game because Engelu Aloua scoring a goal at the beginning and then a goal not far from the end as well so that was annoying we didn't really <laughs> it was a bit of a nothing game nothing in it really and they just had two better chances which they took then we had Sheffield Wednesday away nil nil our first clean sheet for a long time but no nothing of any note in that game but although 
Sheffield Wednesday were just above us, I think, so we managed to keep keep them within reach with that draw. We then had a very pleasing win against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Middlesbrough, of course, in the Premier League. Not doing brilliantly, I don't think. But, oh, actually, sorry, 10th in the Premier League. So they're doing much better than they expected. I don't, know whether, I don't know whether they've been on a little run recently, but I don't think we were massive underdogs for this game when it came round to it. Um, but yeah, it was a game we set up quite defensively, but we managed to um, nick a couple of goals. An own goal there, you can see, but we'll have a look at those now. Ivan Cavallero bagging one as well. Silvio has been a really good signing for us this season I will definitely be extending his loan because unlike real life his fitness has been superb and um, yeah he's been a real great addition getting down the wings and getting them creating chances and stuff like that he's been really really useful but as you can see Helder Costa and Cavalier are working the ball really really well um, he's only, he hasn't scored many Cavalier but that was good and then this was the second goal near the end of the game we weren't really hanging on though at any point. We didn't look under pressure, and I thought Hordes had scored that. But looking at it closer, it did take, take a massive deflection from Traore. It was not going in before it hit him. So that was good. Then a very good win against Aston Villa, three-one. Costa, Dicko, and Cooper, Cooper, Hooper, scoring the goals. After I think did Villa score first? Yeah, Villa scored first. Looking at this now, Scott Hogan. I think he scored a couple in that live com game that we had a couple of episodes ago. Uh, yeah, we struggled the first couple of minutes, but we did get a foothold in the game. I can't remember how I changed it, but I definitely did. We've scored so we've conceded, sorry, so many goals this season where teams have just got into the edge of the box, into those channels, and got the ball into the middle, and we can't seem to deal with it. But we came back into the game really well. Costler with a headed goal just before half time, which came just at the right time, and then shortly after half time, uh, halfway through the second half, in fact, we managed to take the lead from a breakaway. Dicko and Hooper combining well. This, I was playing sort of 4 2 4 formation at this point with a defensive uh, tactic, but it, it worked. We managed to keep the ball away from our box and this was a sealed the win 3-1 but you can see we had lots of lots of chances so playing there's all those attacking players but having the security of playing uh, defensively managed to get us a, a big win there but then we didn't follow it up very well a defeat against Norwich losing 3-1 quite disappointing but we were really going for it and we had Sy sent off as well in that game uh, I'll show you that now Sice is sending off. It's a straight red. Here we go. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, so Sice has been in and out of the team as well recently because of that. Uh, we then followed up that defeat with an FA Cup game, so we had a bit of a break from the league, and it was a very, 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 very entertaining game. Uh, Wolves took a 2 0 lead in the first half through Hooper and Dicko who again playing that 4-2-4 formation but defensive minded we managed to get a good lead early in the game and we seem to score quite a lot of goals like that just passing it into the middle of the box Lonergan played for this game but it was a fairly full strength team um, Cavaliero working it to Ikrem who's still been important and the Dicko making it 2-0 so that, at that point, and the, you know, stayed that way for most of the game. So I thought, right, well, I'll give some of the younger boys a go. Uh, Niall Ennis came on, but we actually conceded a couple of goals. Then um, I think we're just about to see them making it two-one. Dimitri McCormack hitting it from the distance. And I thought, well, there's only twelve minutes left. We should be able to hold on. Changed to quite a defensive tactic. This happened. Niall Ennis, you'll notice, playing uh, came on to the pitch. And then Forrest, uh, well, tackle there from Costa, went into the box and Dimitri managed to put it away to make it 2-2. But then with next to no time left, five minutes to go, we managed to nick the winner in dramatic fashion. 
It was looking like Forrest were going to maybe nab a goal, but Silvio again doing a great job. Cody and Cavalier are combining. Ikram showing again. Look at that ball from Ennis out to Cavalier and then back into the middle. Oh, no. Back into the middle. And then Niall Ennis scoring. Not his first goal, though. His third goal of the season. He scored a couple early on in the League Cup. So he's been playing a little bit this season. Not too much, but he's made a few appearances. Then back to back wins in the championship a 3 1 away win at Barnsley. Hooper, Cavaliero, and Costa playing there, scoring there, sorry. Then a good performance against Burton, despite, I mean, it doesn't look a convincing win 2 1 with a Matt Doherty own goal. But we, did, we didn't come under any pressure at all from Burton. We really played well. And Hooper and Cavaliero scoring in the first half to make it 2 0. Don't seem to be able to kill off teams and really, you know, score three or four past them. Uh, and then this spell of games here: Huddersfield, Newcastle, and Wigan. Three home games, only picking up four points from them. But some, I mean, particularly against Wigan, some quite good performances. You'll spot there: Rajiv Van Lepara scoring that, scoring the goal for Huddersfield on that day to give them the lead after 72 minutes. But Dicko managed to grab a goal near the end as well it was quite a defensive minded setup as well I know that I promised the board that we'd be playing attacking football but we just can't stop conceding goals at the moment this season so I was trying to shut up shop a little bit but I mean it's disappointing there the shot from across the face of the goal to go in but with a couple of minutes left we managed to equalise and a bit of pressure on the ball there forcing it back to the goalkeeper I've been trying as well to press in the midfield a little bit more in um, in recent games two differing results at the moment we get Cavalier to Hooper and then Hooper into the box and Dicko scoring so those two again combining well I haven't started many games with them playing together up front this was a disappointing game again against Newcastle this could have been our chance to get back into the race for automatic promotion and we took the lead very early on seven minutes with new Adico scoring and we were in fact in the lead at half time as well but unable to hold on uh, just again weak and poor defensive mistakes has cost us Johnson proving again look taking the ball forward and look at that that uh, period but Mike Williamson was spot as well there uh, he came in, I think it might have been his first league start, he's maybe played in the FA Cup, I'm not sure, but Costa with a good bit of skill there, Cavalier banging off the post and Dicko with a tap in after seven minutes, but then after half time, Matt Ritchie with a corner and then Atsu from the edge of the box off the bottom of the bar, good strike there, can't complain about that one but then the winning goal very disappointing from our point of view, a bit of a goal mouth scramble off the post, we actually managed to clear it off the line before then uh, Mitrovic tapped it in. So Newcastle's done the double over us this season. And then the last game, a very convincing win, our, probably our biggest win, our best win this season. We have won 4 1 this season, but we haven't won 3 0. And Gary Hooper bagging a hat trick, so proving that he is a worthwhile signing at this level. If he can just maintain his fitness for the rest of the season, I could see us pushing on to get the playoffs. Uh, I played quite a defensive minded situation situation formation this game we were controlling possession that was the idea behind this and uh, we did manage to grab a few chances Hooper there with a header at the near post to grab his ninth goal of the season then this was a good goal very direct from Wolf Ikram popping the ball to the back post there and Gary Hooper volleying it in and then the third goal with half an hour to go again Ikram at the heart of everything getting the ball forward running the ball at the defence just moving it along consistently but Toccio hasn't played a lot he's had a few injuries over the last couple of games Silvio again proving he's worthwhile and then Hooper tapping it in with his left foot so very good performance and now we move on to Manchester City We'll have a look at them briefly. They've had a couple of big signings as well. They're sitting fourth in the Premier League, so not brilliant. Blah, not brilliant. Not brilliant, but these are the players that we're going to be coming up against. Claudio Bravo, Zabaleta, Company, Otamendi, Cliché, F 
Fernandinho, Fernando, De Bruyne, Jesus, Silva, Aguero. They haven't signed that many players this season. They've signed Carrasco from Atletico Madrid, Franke from Leipzig, and Serge Gnabry from Werder Bremen. So they've spent 40 million. They've got rid of 8 million. Nolito has gone to Tottenham. Uh, let's have a look at the Premier League briefly just to see who's doing well. Liverpool top there with 66 points, so they're 7 points clear of Arsenal in 2nd place. Spurs in 55 points in 3rd. And Man City just about in 4th place, so it's going to be going right down to the wire with Chelsea, Man United and Man City, only separated by 2 points. Leicester doing really well this season, 42 points. Um, the team's struggling, Palace, Stoke and Southampton, West Brom. They're on 26 points, just a point above the relegation zone, so they could be in trouble. And looking at our division, the Championship, we're still in fourth place. We're some way off the top, though. I think that's that's 11 points away from Newcastle. It's too far for us now to catch up with not many games left, 14 games left. But the playoffs are definitely on the cards. And perhaps if we go on a really good run, we could maybe catch Norwich. Maybe. But looking at our schedule, looking back over the season, we haven't really had a period where we've won consistently. But also we haven't gone on a streak where we've lost loads of games in a row or even not won for lots of games. So looking at the games coming up, we've got Brentford, Birmingham, Reading, Ipswich, Rotherham. That would be a really good uh, opportunity to get some wins under our belts. Hopefully we can do. This was the run, of course, in real life where we pushed ourselves away from relegation. Maybe in this it could be the the run that pushes us towards promotion. We'll see. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to tune in for the next one, which is going to be a big clash in the FA Cup against Manchester City. And there'll be a full live com of that game. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.